So I grew up in Lithuania and this fun, fun time of post-Soviet era. So I think it's safe to say that I have a pretty skewed perspective or outlook on brutalist architecture, right? This was my apartment building and this was my neighborhood in which I grew up in. And also here they filmed the typical Soviet district for the famous HBO series Chernobyl. And for a long time, I've associated brutalist architecture with something that is cheap, something that is boring, and something that is dehumanizing. Something that is its own sculptural landmark for functionalism. And it has stripped away of anything that would make it more, well, for the lack of better word, approachable, I guess. And of course, while I was studying architecture, I've learned about all of these examples of great brutalist buildings, but that, that was not enough to shift my uh, mindset. What actually made me do a full 180 was visiting the Gulbenkian Museum in Lisbon, Portugal. Named after its founder, Calust Gulbenkian, probably really butchered that name, I'm sorry, this building is home to a bunch of really, really famous artworks. We won't be focusing on that though. The building was built in the 60s, if I remember correctly, and uh, it does have multiple architects or had multiple architects working on it. If you're arriving by foot from the city center, from Lisbon center, you're first greeted not by a facade, but rather by a garden. A lush big garden at that, right? And the tiles that you walk on are the first sign of this kind of brutalist nature of this place. They are quite large, they are really heavy, but then again, they are floating above each other, as well as above nature. They don't intersect with nature, they coexist with nature, they respect the nature, right? And there is this beautiful interplay between the two. And this attention to seams and to details, uh, or layering, I guess, reminds me of Japanese gardens. And here I go, you know, talking about Japan, Japanese gardens again. No, no, we're not doing that in this video. <laughs> anyway, as you're moving through, as you're moving through the garden, more and more of the Gulbenkian Museum is revealed to you. It's a very, very standard trick to, to use, but hey, it's, you know, it's a standard thing that works. It's standard because it works, right? I don't know what it is about bare concrete and lush greenery, this kind of interplay between them that really gets me, but that is, that is quite a duo. By the way, brutalism does not come from the word brutal, but rather it comes from a French term, beton brut, raw concrete. Just wanted to put it out there so that everyone is on the same page, you know. <laughs> the composition of clean lines of the exterior, the way the shadows drop, the way it's reflected in water, all seems to be thought through very, very, very well. Or, or actually it, were, it might have just been a happy little accident on the architect's part. Doesn't matter. The end result is what matters. It's the best interplay between man-made and the natural worlds that I have ever, ever seen. And I haven't even touched, <laughs> touched on the interior yet. Once you step inside, you immediately notice three things. The quality of the surface finish, the extreme place of ceiling height, and areas where everything is horizontal. It's... I mean, the last one actually caught me by surprise. I've never been in a space that's, of course, framed by the perimeter walls. Of course, you, you need some verticality in there. But all other composition elements and strategies used force horizontality. 
it was more like a concept art of an environment rather than real architecture, to be honest. And I was... I was amazed by it. And with having said all of this about Gulbenkian, there is still the grand finale. The... the music hall. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. If you like these kind of videos, please consider leaving a nice comment, subscribing, leaving a like, all of that jazz, the bell. The bell is also very important. It's just a way for me to know that uh, these videos are kind of appreciated and that I should make more of them. If you really, really like these kind of videos, link in the video description there's a patreon where you can give me money and i will use that money to buy a house in japan that i will renovate and i will put up the video of me renovating it or series of videos here on this channel that's the long-term goal yep i guess that's it that now we're done now we're done see ya bye